Good morning to Rivers Church and happy Easter. We're so glad that you're joining us this week. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name's John. I serve as the online community pastor. If you do me a favor right now, let me know where you're joining us from in the chat. I, I saw last week we had people from Florida and Virginia, so let us know where you're joining us from this week. I'm just really excited for today's online experience. Here at Two Rivers Church, we don't believe that you're gonna to get to know us in just one experience. So I wanna make sure to invite you back for the next three Sundays. And as you get to know us, I'd really personally like to get to know you. So if you could take a minute and fill out the welcome card, you fill that out. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna send you a gift. I'm gonna connect with you this week, get to know who you are and let you get to know who we are. Also wanna encourage you that if you got little ones joining us today for the Easter experience, we have a gift for them also. There's a link here below me. You'll see the link also in the chat and that's for the Easter candy. Uh, we have a powerful experience planned for you, but each and every week we have powerful experiences. So I want to encourage you and invite you right now to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe today and then you can just stay in touch with everything that's happening here in the online experience. And then also, we believe that everyone has a next step at Two Rivers Church. We believe that everyone should know God, find freedom, discover purpose and make a difference. So I wanna invite you to our next steps online and you'll see a link below for that also. And then Pastor Will has a powerful message planned for us today. And in this message, there's gonna be a survey that you can participate in and you're also gonna see the link below for that. So let's get ready to buckle our seat belts and get into a powerful experience. Before we do that, I wanna pray with you and for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for this amazing experience. I thank you that we can celebrate a risen Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah. 
I search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Oh, I never enough You came along You put me back together Satisfied, oh, here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you.
death and the death Super excited for that message series starting next week. So make sure to invite a friend and I'm gonna see you here next Sunday. So right now, I would love for everyone to grab the annual Easter survey. And then when I say everybody, I mean everybody. Cause we're gonna take a moment and as we're doing that survey, I would love to hear from you. We're gonna make some decisions 
around the information that you give us. And since everyone sort of joins together here on this one Sunday, it's a great opportunity for us to get that content. So one of the things that you can do if you're joining us online, you should find the annual survey in the link right below. In fact, if you'll keep that open, we're gonna use that all the way throughout the experience today. And so what's gonna happen is, as we get into the survey, question number one says, I'd like to hear a message on what the Bible says about, and then if you would, just mark a few of those options, because what's gonna happen is we're gonna, throughout the year, actually later on in this year, we're gonna do another series, and we're gonna, it's called Reply All, and we're gonna have the opportunity to talk about and address some of the questions that you develop in this content. Question number two is, I'm interested in hearing more about these themes. And so you can pick some of those options. It'll help us developing our messages. And then this third question is our opportunity to take a little bit of a spiritual temperature in the room. Uh, the question is, the next step in my spiritual journey and we started this church eight years ago to help you go on a journey in your relationship with God. So whether you think you're really far from God or if you've been in church your whole life, we want to help you to take your next step. And as your pastor, I would love to know where people are at in that journey. And then you're gonna find there's one last option on that survey and it looks a little bit blank. It's a little unusual. It's A, B, C, and D, don't fill that out, hold on to it. We're gonna come back to that at the end of the experience today. Today we're talking about living guilt-free. I wonder how many of us battle with feeling guilty. I often feel guilty. We all make mistakes and do things we know we shouldn't. It's easy to go around with a heaviness, feeling bad about ourselves. But living guilty doesn't do anything productive. There are all kinds of guilt that can weigh us down. Studying for this message, I discovered that food guilt is one of the top guilts that people experience. 29% of what we eat makes us feel guilty. If you're a man, you feel food guilt for about 20 minutes. Women, for whatever the reason, experience food guilt longer and more intensely. Food guilt can become a destructive cycle. People feel guilty for eating. Then, in order to feel better, they eat more and then repeat the cycle. Over time, they quite literally get weighed down by their guilt and the food they eat. Just like adding toppings to my ice cream, we are weighed down with all kinds of guilt. You feel mom guilt. It's hard to measure up if if you're a working mom, you feel guilty if you aren't home. And if you are home, you feel guilty if you are not working. If you have a Pinterest perfect friend, you love her and you hate her because she never forgets any events and always brings baked goods. And not only did you forget to bring the baked goods, you forgot the entire event. You feel so guilty. It's that moment, now we got all that mom guilt, let's scoop it right in there. Let's get it right on top of everything we're already carrying. Then there's general guilt. I feel guilty I don't do enough to help people. I don't say no when I should say no. Scoop it right in there. Spiritual guilt. I don't serve enough. I don't give enough. I told a lie. I was jealous of somebody. Scoop that right in. I tried the best I could, but I still couldn't hold my marriage together. Scoop that in. Get a big old helping on there. Guilt doesn't help you to do better. It causes you to struggle more. Guilt drains you emotionally. Physically, it'll even wear you out. When we're guilty, we don't pursue our dreams. We don't believe to overcome challenges. We get weighed down. We end up carrying all this weight around. Before we leave the house, let me go get my guilt. Let me load up all the mistakes I've made. Let me put my regrets in there. I should have raised my children better. I should have finished school. Oh, I yelled at my coworker yesterday. Let me fit that regret in there. Let's see if we can get that in. Let me scoop it right in. I lost my temper in traffic last week. In fact, I got so upset, 
I spoke in tongues to that driver. I'm going to need to go get a whole nother bucket over there so I can put some more. I'm going to get a whole nother set of ice creams so I can fit that in and carry two buckets with me now. We go through life carrying around all this weight. We wonder why we walk with a limp, why life is a struggle, why we're tired, why, why we can't accomplish our dreams. It's because we were never designed to carry that weight. You weren't created to live guilty, to have that nagging voice always telling you there's something wrong with you. You don't deserve to be happy. You were not created to carry guilt. Wow, that ice cream is heavy with everything that we've loaded into it. I don't think I want to pay for that. The scripture tells us to lay aside the weights that easily beset us. It's easy to carry weight. It's time to get rid of that baggage. This is a new day. God wants you to go out of here lighter. Nothing you've done in the past is too much for the mercy of God. That's why the enemy works overtime in this area. He knows that guilt is going to keep you from your destiny. There's nothing he would love more than for you to go through life against yourself, focused on your own failures, feeling unworthy. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He'll remind you of everything you've done wrong for the last 30 years. Before you get out of bed in the morning, he'll replay every mistake that you've made, how you weren't there for your children, how you lost your temper, how you gave in to the temptation. He wants you to pay for the things that are weighing you down. But here's the key. The moment that you ask God to forgive you, he not only forgave you, but he doesn't remember your sins anymore. Do yourself a favor and say, I'm not perfect. At every location right now, repeat after me. Say, I'm not perfect, but I am forgiven. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, I'm forgiven. You can't drag yesterday's failures into today and live in victory. Let it go. In fact, Psalm 103.10 says, He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. God's mercies are fresh every morning. Don't spend another minute down on yourself, living in regrets. God has forgiven you. Why don't you forgive yourself? God's not pushing you down. Why don't you quit pushing yourself down? God's made you righteous, not because of anything you've done, but because of what He has done on the cross. Romans 5.17 says the gift of righteousness is for all who will receive it. You might have brought guilt with you in here today. You might as well leave it at your seat. You might have brought heaviness, regrets, and unworthiness. You can unload all of that right now. You can make an exchange. If you give up your guilt and your regrets and your unworthiness, God will give you His righteousness. It's a gift you got to receive it. The reason that God can give us the gift of righteousness is that Jesus paid for it on the cross 2,000 years ago. In fact, Luke tells us a little bit about what happened on the cross. He describes the scene for us in Luke chapter 23. When we see Jesus here, we don't see Jesus the way we would expect to see God. We would expect to see God with a crown of gold. Here we find Jesus with a crown of thorns. We might expect to see God wearing robes that are beautiful and flowing. Here we see na Jesus naked. Instead of signet rings on his fingers, we find that he's nailed to the cross. In fact, 
He's not there by himself. Luke chapter 23, verse 32 says it this way. There were two other men, both criminals, who were also let out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus, in this moment, even as his arms are stretched out wide, he does not want us to carry the guilt. Even the people that have nailed him to the cross, in that moment, he says, I will take your guilt. I will take your shame. God, forgive them. They don't have to carry this anymore. I'm going to carry it right now on the cross. Then in verse 39, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We're being punished justly for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. What this criminal understands is he understands that he deserves his punishment. He knows that he should carry his guilt. There's all different types of guilt. Some of the guilt that we carry doesn't belong to us. We should throw it off and not have one extra thought about it because there shouldn't be any payment for it at all. We don't need to carry it. But there's a whole nother guilt that we carry that belongs to us that we should feel guilty for. It's healthy for us to feel that guilt. But Jesus, in this moment, he doesn't turn to that criminal and say, yes, you're getting what you deserve. Yes, you should carry that guilt. Yes, you earned it. You should be on the cross. You are a criminal. You're a filthy, filthy animal. That's not what Jesus says. In verse 42, he then said, the criminal says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. But Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Here's the thing. That criminal, he couldn't do one thing to earn forgiveness. He couldn't do anything. He, there wasn't a thing that he could do. He couldn't raise his hands. In worship, he couldn't serve on Sunday. He couldn't give in the offering. His hands were nailed to the cross. There's not one thing that he could do to serve Jesus. He deserved to die. He was a criminal. He was G-U-I-L-T-Y, guilty. And Jesus gives him new life. I want to encourage you, let it go. Don't start thinking about if you deserve it. You can't earn it. It's a gift. Just receive it. Sometimes we think we need to pay God back for our mistakes by living down and discouraged to show him that we're sorry or remorseful. We should have sorrow. My point is once you ask for forgiveness, you don't have to pay God back. The price has already been paid. But when you live guilty, you're saying, in effect, the sacrifice Christ made wasn't enough. Let me add something to it. Let me do my part by paying some kind of penalty for this wrong that I've done. Living guilty and condemned doesn't bring any honor to God. After all that Christ did to pay the price, if you want to honor God, get rid of the guilt. My parents married young. Um, my mom just turned 17, 11 days before she had me. They never got along. They would fight and all that stuff all the time. So they ended up getting divorced. I never grew up with my father. My father um, decided that his new family was more important. I was raised in church. My mom always took us, you know, to church, whether we was in Awanas or um, Royal Rangers. 
I had, you know, when I went to church and stuff, I had friends. Um, I felt like I belonged, but I knew I didn't belong because I knew in my heart I was holding that secret because I didn't feel like I could tell them or anyone what I was experiencing or feeling. I just would hide those feelings. Um, I would just stuff them down. I would try to ignore them, but they were, they was, sometimes they were hard. There was this girl that was interested in me, and so I kind of jumped into a marriage. We, got, we were married for about 11 years, and we had two boys. Boys are the love of my life. I can remember holding my firstborn and asking God to take this from me, because I was still dealing with the same-sex attractions. We ended up getting divorced, went through a really messy divorce, but I fought to make sure I could see my boys. And then, still same thing, um, still fighting the same-sex attractions, I jumped into a second marriage, I mean, really fast. That marriage was a, I mean, she was a very nice lady, and everything was good, but we ended up um, divorcing after that one because she wasn't, she had just jumped into a second marriage too. A big part of my life too was for 30 years, I, um, would, I smoked pot um, every day to take care, take the pain away, take my anxieties away of what was going on in my life. So after that, I kind of just um, decided that, well, maybe this is the way God made me and maybe I should just live with it, even though I've been fighting it my whole life and fighting everything. I felt empty. I always felt like something was missing. So I was, you know, like th there had to be something more than this. I knew God, but I just didn't feel like I belonged. My life evolved around getting stoned, working, and that was about it. To me, I just didn't feel like there would be a church for me, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know, so that's why, like I said, I had, you know, emailed whether I would be accepted here. And, you know, they said that I would be accepted. I mean, when I was walking up the stairs, you always feel welcome. Um, that's one thing that was totally, when I first, that would be like the first time, you know, when I first, you know, you felt they, they did welcome you. Pastor Gary Ingram was speaking um, that day, and his life story was my life story. And I could not believe that he was saying all that he said in church, and that finally, for the first time, for <laughs> the first time in my life, I knew there was somebody else like me out there, and that if God could change his life, I knew for the first time that God could change my life. That was the day that I knew I didn't have to live the way I've been living my whole life. For the first time in my life, I felt relieved that somebody in church knew exactly what I had been going through my whole life and that there was hope that I could be loved by God. I could change my life and start a path that is still, I'm still walking on because I'm still working on the feelings of myself, you know, how I don't like myself. No matter what you feel in your head, no matter what you feel in your heart, God is there and God does love you. No matter what you think you've done to screw up that love, to lose that love. Don't think that you've gone too far. There's always a way back to God. Man, that's such a great story of how God takes all of our mess. It doesn't matter how guilty we are. Jesus paid it all. He takes no matter what situation, no matter your past, no matter who you are, no matter what you think you've done, Jesus has paid it all. And so we can live guilt free. Here's what I want to do today. I want us to be able to close out our time together. I told you we were going to use our Easter survey and we were going to go through those four letters that are on the survey. 
A, B, C, and D. So I want everybody, everywhere, everybody join us online, everybody in the room, anybody who is in any way related to what's happening right now to get that Easter survey out and we're gonna walk through that survey together. Because what I wanna know is if you have given Jesus your life. And the way why I wanna do that is if you are already in a relationship with God, you know him personally, this is your opportunity to write, just mark under letter A and just put a check there. But now, as you're hearing about Jesus, and you're discovering that Jesus paid it all for you, if you would like to let it go, and you would like to have your guilt removed and be restored into relationship with Jesus, I want you to check that letter B, because B is, I want to begin a real relationship with God today. You might be here, hearing about Jesus for the very first time, and or you've heard about Jesus your whole life, but you just want to consider what God wants to do in your life before you make that decision, I want you to just mark letter C. Let us know you're not ready yet to become a follower of Christ, but you're considering it. And I want, to, I want everyone at Two Rivers to feel safe. You can come to Two Rivers. You can belong before you believe. And we want to create a place, it's always been my dream, to create an opportunity or a space for people to consider Christ and not have to opt in right away. And then letter D is, I don't ever intend to make that decision. So you're here, and I'll just, I'll just tell you right flat out, I'll be praying for you. Because I've watched people come, and they've marked letter D, but they've discovered over the course of time, there's a group of people and a God who loves them. And eventually I've watched them mark C and then B, and I celebrate that. So I just want everyone to know, I want you to look down through that list. Are you already a follower of God? Mark A. Are you B, beginning a new relationship with God today? C, you're considering what God wants to do in your life? Or D, you don't ever intend to make that decision? Just go ahead and mark that. Here's what I want to do. I want everyone at every location to pray this prayer with me so that no one is going to pray in this moment by themselves. In fact, if you're in your room, just know there are hundreds of people all over the place that are going to pray this together. So I want you to pray this and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I believe that you paid for my sins on the cross. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm not going to carry that guilt anymore. I'm going to live free. I believe that you rose again and that I now have new life in you. Thank you. I'm going to follow you all of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey everybody, let's give a big round of applause for those that just accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm so proud that you just took that step towards Jesus. And I just want to encourage you right now, if you, if you didn't take a moment, fill out the survey. Let us know that you accepted Jesus. I want to connect with you personally this week and help you take your first step with him. So please take a moment, fill out the survey, uh, and, and get that sent in to us. Also, right now, we're going to get ready to have a moment where we're going to celebrate Jesus right now with our tithes and our offerings. You know, here at Two Rivers Church, we have an opportunity to do amazing things and transform lives all over this world. And an amazing thing we did this week because of your partnership is we were able to write a check for $15,000 for the Fire Bible Project. That's right, $15,000. Bibles are gonna go into the least, the least reached people of this world. They're gonna get Bibles in the near future because you partnered with us. You see, each and every week when you partner with us, we transform our world and lead people to Jesus. Now let's pray over today's offering. Heavenly Father, I thank you. 
I thank you that you're going to multiply this offering, that we can continue to reach people groups all over this world and in Endicott and in Binghamton and Johnson City and Canandaigua and Portland and Corning and Ithaca and all over, Father. We're so thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right now you're going to see instructions on the screen and how you can give. I'm so thankful that you joined us today for our uh, Easter experience. We're, we're thankful for Jesus and we're thankful for you. Have a great time with your family today and we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested in my life began and ash was redeemed only beauty remained my orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, so free, washes over me. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. was a ransom. Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose.